Hi, I'm Joy By the World. Today we are going to continue the study on understanding prophecy and its direct relationship to prayer, fasting, confession of sins, and insight. But before I do that, let us go into a word of prayer. Father in heaven, sovereign Lord over all the nations, Cause us to accept your guidance so that we may never compromise your truth. We ask these mercies in your holy name. Amen. Now, how should one understand prophecy? The book of Daniel is a book that has a lot to do with uh, prophecy as it relates to end times, one of the most studied book on end times prophecy. And in it, God has, through his wisdom, given us some sequence in which we can learn how to study prophecy and here they are number one studying the scripture with great diligence that's Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 number two prayer and fasting that you'll find in verse 3 confession of sins Daniel 9 verse 5 10 and all the way to 19 then know number four insight that you'll find in Daniel 9 22 and that is insight in order to grasp the meaning of the prophetic vision which you'd find in Daniel Now notice Daniel's, how he ended his prayer. He asked for forgiveness. He said, O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen to me and act. Don't delay for your own sake, O my God, because your people and your city bear your name. Now, verse 20, even while I was praying and confessing my sin and the sins of my people and desperately pleading with the Lord my God for Jerusalem, his holy mountain, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the earlier vision, flew swiftly to me at the time of the evening sacrifice and said to me, Daniel, I'm here to help you understand God's plan. Notice over the other side of the pain, God's plan he spoke about here it says that I'm here to give you insight with understanding and that's exactly what God did notice he asked God not to delay and that's exactly what God did now let's read verse 22 and 23 together I'll start with the living Bible on the right hand pane it says here Daniel and said to me Daniel I am here to help you to understand God's plan. But over in the New American Standard, it reads this way, and he gave me instruction and talked to me and said, O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you insight with understanding. So that is what God's plan is about. It's not just understanding God's plan. God is going to give him insight to understand his plan. And then verse 23 says the moment you began praying a command was given and I'm here to tell you what it is it was for God loves you very much listen and try to understand the meaning of the vision that you saw notice over in the New Jerusalem says it this way now Daniel I have come down to you to teach you how to understand the how is very important. It's not just understanding, but how to understand. And this is also imperative in understanding anything else in the Bible. It's not just studying the Bible, but how to study the Bible. Now, 
Note the second factor that we picked up here in verse 23 says, listen and try to understand the meaning of the vision that you saw. Now, remember the vision is about prophecy. So it's not just understanding prophecy, but understanding the meaning. Because you can also, a person can easily say, yes, I understand what is said, but they still have not grasped the meaning behind it. Because the meaning is separate they are integrated but they're separate because it makes no sense to understand without understanding what the meaning of it so that is something that we need to take into consideration when studying prophecy verse 23 attests to that fact notice the second portion of it it says grasp the meaning of the word understand the vision now, when you get to Daniel 10 verse 1, when Daniel receives his second vision, you find that Daniel has already begun to put this principle into practice. Notice verse 1, the second portion, it says that he grasped the meaning of the revelation. What it meant was disclosed to him in a vision. So you see, Daniel wasted no time in applying principles in studying the, the scripture so much so that when he received the vision, his mind was alert to understand what it meant. In the Living Bible, it says, Daniel had another vision. It concerned events certain to happen in the future, times of great tribulation, wars, and sorrows. And this time, he understood what the vision meant. Now, when one reads what we have just read, you could easily assume that Daniel began to understand the word by just mere reading the scripture and applying the truth of grasping what it meant. But when you read verse 2 to 3, we, we are faced with the reality of what really caused him to understand the meaning. Now let us read. It says, When this vision came to me, Daniel said later, I had been in mourning for three full weeks. Then now verse 3 will help us to, to grasp more fully what this meant. Now naturally, Daniel would mourn after realizing that the vision was speaking about the great tribulation. Now, who wouldn't mourn when they understand anything about the Great Tribulation? But what form did the mourning take? Let us look at verse 3. Now this is the means by which Daniel mourned. Notice verse 3. All this time I tasted neither wine nor meat, and of course I went without deserts. I neither washed nor shaved nor combed my hair. But what I wanted to notice is the Revised Standard. It says, I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Now that verse is going to take us back to remind us of Daniel chapter 1 when Daniel first came to Babylon as a captive. But before I do that, I'm going to let you have a look at verse 12 because what happens is that verse 2 and 3 is really speaking about fasting and it was the fasting that caused him to gain the insight into understanding the vision. Now, this is clear in verse 12 and that is what it's all about. It was not just merely studying the word. It was his fasting as well that caused him to come to this knowledge of the great tribulation. Notice verse 12. Then he said, Don't be frightened, Daniel, for your request have been heard in heaven and was answered the very first day you began to fast before the Lord and pray for understanding. Did you get that? He actually began to fast and prayed for understanding. Now, how many of us would have decided to fast three full weeks to get an understanding of something that we have come to learn through our diligence in study and recognizing it has a, some serious impact on the entire world to come, not even our day? It would have been future because he was told it was future events. How many of us would have done that? Now, this is something that God is saying to us. We need to still be doing it today, even more so, because we are definitely heading towards that climatic time of events 
that is going to be such as never has been in all of earth's history. That's what God's word said over and over throughout the scripture. So we need to apply ourselves not just simply studying, but really serious prayer and fasting concerning the end times. Oh, but there is so much more. Let us look at this. Read again. It says that the very first day that he began to fast before the Lord and pray for understanding, that very day I was sent here to meet you. But for 21 days, the mighty evil spirit who overrules the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the top officers, came to help me so that I can was able to break through these spirit rulers of Persia. What I wanted to notice here, Michael the Archangel only bars or fights with Satan, the devil himself, throughout the scripture. Every time, that's the only person. So this mighty evil spirit was Satan himself, who was trying to block the very answer that Daniel was seeking through fasting. And notice, Daniel fasted for three full weeks and the, that battle took place for the full three weeks. Now, can you see that if this is happening, when we are not fasting, can you imagine what Satan is trying to prevent us from understanding? You see, the, the fasting was going to help Daniel to understand end time prophecies and this is what we need so that we can truly understand prophecy but what you're finding there's a whole lot of hocus pocus going on in the scriptures with but not I'm not in the scripture itself what I mean those who are preaching are not really giving the people what they need to hear and what is part of the cause of this or the major reason for this I bet I can vouch this is the problem they're not seeking the Lord as they should with prayer and fasting and not just simple, you know, s trivial fasting, not just a two minute thing or half a day thing. I'm talking about serious seeking the Lord with all their heart and fasting, and praying and mourning. Because can you imagine the magnitude of what's going to happen? And if we're so relaxed, that's not good. No, this is something and Satan doesn't want us to know so what he does he blocks it but can you imagine if Daniel was not fasting he would not have gotten any revelation concerning this time sure God could probably choose someone else but the fact remain God would always seek a man a woman who would stand in the gap by this method now we need to do that people we cannot continue to be just relaxing at ease in Zion now, remember when we just read in verse 3 of chapter 10 here that um, Daniel said he ate no delicacies, no meat or wine during his time of fasting or mourning? Now, that reminds us of Daniel chapter 1. That was the first time we read something like that where Daniel refused to eat any delicacies or wine. Now, this is not a coincidence. God has a purpose for Daniel to even at this point be doing the same thing again. And it has everything to do with the revelation knowledge of the end times. But there's another reason and I'm going to show it to you just now. Because what God was doing was preparing Daniel from the very beginning when he entered Babylon to understand prophecy as it relates to the great Babylon, which we're going to read about in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Now, this is interesting because many times people just talk about Daniel's not eating delicacies in chapter 1, but they never saw the connection with end time and prophecy. And Daniel chapter 10 verse 3 here clearly is telling us that. So, with that in mind, let me just refresh your mind with Daniel chapter 1. Um, one about this incident. Let me run that through quickly. Daniel chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 3 down to 5. It says, Then he ordered Aspenaz, who was in charge of his palace personnel, to select some of the Jewish youths brought back as captives, young men of the royal family and nobility of Judah, and to teach them the Chaldean language and literature. Pick strong, healthy, 
good looking lads he said those who have read widely in many fields remember that and are well informed alert and sensible and have enough poise to look good around the palace now notice verse 5 i'm going to read from the new king james over there it says and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and wine which he drank and for three years of training for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king so what you're finding think with me jesus also the word food here always remind you of the word jesus trained his disciples for also a three-year period actually three and a half years but it's the same time frame basically and they were fed the word of god during that time now notice something this was the king of babylon his food for training for his kingdom to serve before him but Daniel was to be trained by the word of God to be serving the king of kings of the king of heaven now let me go on to the next verse notice the new Jerusalem and the new American apocryphy it says the king assigned them a daily allowance of food and wine from the royal table and where they were to receive an education lasting for three years after which they would enter the royal service so what you're getting here um the training was to take place first and it was after this training the same thing jesus did they were trained and then they they were left to enter into his service and in fact, Jesus speak of the fact that when his disciples, when he returned, they'll be sitting at his table. Remember, the word is always seen as food. It's lying to food in the scripture. So that is something to, to, to think about when we're looking at this. Now, let us look at the next verse. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. What I wanted to think of here, though this may seem a little bit off for some persons who may not understand, wine, when we think of wine here and consider that everything that Daniel was doing, he was praying during the time of the, the evening sacrifice, know that he's refusing to 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 was refusing then in daniel 1 to to eat of the king's table and then here in daniel 10 3 we read that daniel was fasting and doing the same thing not eating delicacies remember the king's table would have defiled him and but here he was fasting and getting revelation about the end times but when you look back at daniel 8 and daniel 11 which is forward you're going to see that it's going to really speaking about the sacrifice of jesus now wine in the scripture speak of the blood of jesus and of course the food would have been basically would could easily represent the body of jesus so that is what i'm looking at here so um this is very interesting because everything is really surrounding in daniel about the sacrifice most people miss that the end times has everything to do with the temple and sacrifice and the temple that it's speaking of is really our body but i'll prove that to you as i go through the scripture now to conclude this segment of the study let us revisit verse 12, reading from the New American Standard. And what I wanted to focus on is the last portion of that verse where it says, And I have come in response to your words. That's the angel saying that. Now, what response to what words is the angel speaking of? It all has to do with the sequence that we just looked at. It began with Daniel studying the scripture with diligence. Then he went on to pray and fast based on what he had read because he got understanding as to what was occurring with his people and next he confessed the sins because he knew that what he was reading was referring to all the sins that was going to cause them to go through all of this terrible thing that is called the great tribulation and finally he gained insight to grasp the meaning of the prophetic vision. No wonder 
the angel was sent in response to those words because by this time it's obvious Daniel prayed in keeping with what all of this that we have just looked at the sequence and so God responded immediately he did not even delay God immediately responded the very moment he set his heart to do this to seek with fasting to gain understanding so we need to do that and I trust that you'll take these things to heart and you'll begin to do just what God wants you to do we cannot understand prophecy the way in which most of us are doing it we need to do it God's way he laid down these principles in the Bible and we need to follow them so I trust that you'll take it to heart take God's advice and do what he says thank you for listening and may God richly bless you.